So what happens when you want chunky yarn and you don't have any chunky yarn? You've only got standard double knitting weight yarn. Well, you make S with your yarn so that you've got three strands and then pick those three strands up and make your slip knot as you normally would. So I make mine like this. Okay. Put all three of those on there. Now your tail's got these ends and you've got one string and a loop. You're going to pull that string through that loop and make it longer. So now you've got a three strand thickness of double knit weight yarn. Um, also, another thing, instead of doing chains like this to start, it causes loads of confusion as to where you go along to, you know, and it's it's awkward. So uh, another way to do a chain, <clears throat> your starting row, foundation row, is to chain one at the beginning, wrap your yarn around your hook, keep it loose at this point. Go back into that same hole and pull through a loop. One, two, three. Wrap your yarn around your hook and pull through all. One, two, three. So you've done a half double crochet into same hole again through all three again same hole Can you see here this is running out just pull it through again Carry on, pull through all three, again, find that same hole, pull through all three, so we've got one, two, three, four, I'm going to make eleven. Still an inchy, even though it's thick wool. Well, we've made it thick wool. Okay, now you can see you've got a top row with two, two loops as you normally have and you've got a bottom row with a neat edge. Okay, now I'm going to chain one. Two, three. Pull through some more yarn. Now I'm going to carry on doing half double crochets, but instead of going through the normal top two loops, I'm going to go through the back here, this bottom loop. Right. 
So there's your first one. There are your three chains. Pick up that back loop. Wrap me all around. Come through there. Three on. Go around. Pull through three. Again. Through there. Pull through three. through three So this is your foundation row and then we've made three turning chains and then we've done a row of half double crochet for row two and we're going to now make another three chains turn our work and come back in the opposite direction as if we've done it with our left hand using mirror stitches okay so there's your chain three to match that side Turn it over so that the back of the work is now facing you. Keep your yarn towards you because it's in back facing row, mirror row. And we're going to do half double crochets, the same thing as we've just done, but in reverse. So there's your top two loops, and we're going to go into these back, second back loops here because that's your front loop at the front of your work. This is your back loop at the back of your work. And then this is your second back loop. So we're going to do half double crochets, wrap the yarn around, come down into the first one, wrap the yarn away from you, pull your yarn through. You've now got three loops. Wrap your yarn round, pull through three. And when you come out, you go to the back of your work, away from you. Next one. just goes into here. If you get confused about which loop to go into because there's a little one that goes around there. This is your second back loop and then your two at the front continue here. So that's definitely your second back loop. Last one, chain three, mirror wise. And turn back to front. So now you can see that using that second back loop has pushed those two top loops forward and made a rib. And that's your third 
third row, your foundation row, your second row and your third row. This is the front of your work and if we now turn it over you can see that the back of the work hasn't got the ridges on because all of the back of your stitches are facing backwards and all the front of your stitches are facing forwards. We're going to go into that back loop there. Down there. Half double crochet. Three. Next one. Through here. Push those two top loops forward to make the rib. You have to try and do this just so you can feel the squishiness because I can't describe to you what, how squishy it is. It's beautiful. Chain three. I've done 29 rows, 30 rows. Um, you finish on a front facing row and you chain three as you normally do and then you turn it so that you can come along this edge and we're going to work into these three chain spaces at the end and we're not going to go in between we're just going to make we're going to make five double crochets into each three chain loop to make a popcorn stitch so you wrap your wool around once Go through that three chain hole and pull through your work and yarn. Wrap your wool around you again. Pull through two loops on your hook. Wrap around you again. Pull through another two to complete the first double crochet. We need five of those in that same hole. So repeat. Pull through two. Pull through two. Three, four, five. When you've done the five, just pull up a little loop, take your hook out, find the first one, the top two loops of that first double crochet you made, and then pick up your working chain again, your working loop, and pull it. I've missed that look. Oh. No, it's right, it's just because it's lots of loops. Pull that through there and then chain one to fasten that stitch off. And then you've made a little popcorn stitch look. Take a little tulip at the back. A little flower. Right now I'm only gonna chain two in between each one. And then we're going to repeat it to the next one. So again, five double crochets. One. So we're going to continue all the way along to the end. Now that we've got to the end of our popcorn, first row of popcorn stitch along the edge, then we come back to where we started with our slip knot. I'm only going to... I've 
Miss, of course, that loop there, look. Just do that first initial single crochet to um, secure your popcorn stitch, but don't do the next chain two. We're just going to go into that slip knot under the top. Two loops there. And keep your yarn underneath. <coughs> And then on your other end, you're going to go into the two chain loop. Bring your yarn between your layers so that it doesn't get tangled around. Just go straight through that loop and then scoop up your wool like that. Pull it through that first slip knot so that you have two on your hook. And then with your yarn between your layers, complete a single crochet. Okay. Now you've joined your two bits like that. Your two edges. So find the next. You can see that one's in there. We're going to go in that one, down both. Oops, straight down. Put your yarn underneath. And then go down the next two here on that side. Scoop up your wool, pull it through, pull it through two, do your single crochet. Repeat along this row, like underneath. Make sure you get the right because I've trebled the yarn. I'm just making sure that I get all three strands when I do pull things through. Because I had a loose one at the beginning, I, I sort of wove it through under there. It should be fine. Sometimes I'm quite particular about what I do, and other times I just, you know, it's just crochet, it's not the end of the world. Just carry on loosely going along so that you're sort of matching your rib from your half double crochets that you did. So these 12 stitches, these 12 chains that you start with, with the inches, it's a very simple thing to expand to make lots of other things from. So the inches are really useful on their own, you can patchwork them all together and I'm going to show you after this how to do them continuously. Um, <clears throat> the charts that have just been uploaded on the marinas, Chris, Mercal, uh, the nine charts are customizable so i'm going to show you how you can do different textures and um swapping colors and how to use up all your scrap ends and i mean the tiniest of ends uh, if, if you can wrap your bit of yarn that is an end round your two fingers basically that's one stitch <laughs> That's one single crochet, roughly. So, you know, with the tiniest of ends, you can put those to use. And I'm going to show you how to do stuff like that. Loads of little tips. Just press the like button on the video and um, the subscribe and the bell. And you'll get notifications when I put new things on. And then you won't miss out on anything. So, now I've done this row. Can you see that? And it all matches. That sort of, with not doing those chains there and just going into that one, it pulls it together. So it continues along. We'll just sort that end out in a minute. So now we're going to cut, we're going to do popcorns along this edge like we did that edge. So. I'm going to copy what I did before and just loop into there. And then I'm going to 
Jane too. Before I begin with the popcorn, I'm just going to prepare my yarn because the popcorns do <coughs> take up a lot. <laughs> you used to get a bit of exercise when you crochet and when you're doing this. Weave your arms about all over. So back to popcorns we do. That chain two counts as your first double crochet. You might need five in each loop, so that's two now. So this is three. As before, wrap around, pull through twice. That's why it's a double. That's how I found it easier to understand the American terms than I did the English terms when I was learning the what the stitches were called because since I was very young I knew the movements but that's all they were, they were movements. I didn't follow crochet patterns, I followed knitting patterns. I knitted more than I crocheted um, but I found crochet really relaxing and crocheted a lot but like I say I didn't know what the stitches were called, I just made movements. So I had my own way of doing things and I just made shapes and patterns and textures. Um, mostly I knitted. So about seven years ago I, I picked up a hook again um, and I thought I'd best learn what they were called, these stitches that I was doing because I wanted to make things, pretty things. So, and then I discovered that some of the movements I was doing, there weren't names for. So I've given them names and I'm just showing you what I know. I'm not a professional. I'm just showing you what I know. You might like it, you might not like it. I'm not saying it's the right way. There is no right way. You know, there's just different ways. And it's all a choice. So, there you go. Let's do these popcorns and get this lovely squishiness finished. But like I say, if you are enjoying Crofo and all these mirror stitches and the techniques and ways of using the mirror stitches that I'm showing you, then please do like and subscribe because it makes all the difference and it's allowing me actually to survive right now. So couldn't survive without it, it's keeping us sane. Crochet is good at that, it's a really good therapy. Nope. Do you like this little trick with the yarn? I'm hoping I can get up to um, 500 subscribers soon because then I can get the uh, live chat thing on. We can get a community page. So, because I don't really do social media as much as I used to, actually that'd be quite a noise as um, I've, I've talked to YouTube, <laughs> I love it. So, I'm going to be on YouTube and, and I want me community page but to get a community page you have to have 500 subscribers so that's my first aim because then I can talk to you all a lot more easier and we can just do it all on here It'll be fun oh and I haven't forgot as well um that fun thing I said that I was going to show you that's being prepared that's coming and I'm dead excited about that
So this is how you turn an inchy into a nice chunky cowl with less than 100 grams of double knitwear yarn in very little time really. So if you're cold, get your hook out. There you go, and you can make a matching scarf because I've got one to show you in a sec. I just called it thin because I don't know whether it's a wrap or a scarf or a what. So I just, I made a thing. <laughs> I made lots of things. <laughs> anyway, I might just call it dangleberry because it's, it's got lovely berries on it. I'm going to show you in a sec. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. I'm rubbish, honest. So I chained three at the end because I didn't chain three there. And I'm going to just join it onto that first. Or you can... Well, actually, no, I'm going to join it onto there. In the middle of that tulip. Pull that loop. And then it's in the same place as all the rest of them are. And you've matched up. It's a bit big, that. I'm going to just make it two. I don't like how it's sitting. Do that again. So just do two, I thought. So you can adjust it if your tension's different. It's of course, is a, you know. Right, fab, I'm all right with that. I'm gonna just secure that. Another one. Mm. Try and cut this where <laughs> I can pull the loop back because I don't know. Oh, just cut it, Lisa. Right there. I've got an end for me, and she. Okay. I've pulled it through a couple of times because I want a nice tight knot so that these don't come out. And I always find, oh, sorry, that was loud. I always find that you can just tease them down, you know. I know it's not, it, it, honest, you don't feel them. You can squish it under and inside all of that. And if you've got a, um, a needle felt and tool, just do the thing on there and it'll soften it. And you won't have to um, sew them in as much. So there you go. That's it's uh, it's done. Stitching your ends, and you've got a lovely warm cowl. And, and if it wasn't for the ends, you probably wouldn't see where that was. Look. Where should we do them? In here. I think I see it. I just put them wherever it wants to be. I really get a needle out. So the inside's nice and flat when it's against your skin and I know it looks like it's going to be irritating but it's not and it's quite stretchy and soft and squidgy and lovely. When you triple your wool like this, triple, triple, it's the trouble with troubles, trouble with trouble, trouble. <laughs> oh I don't know. Right, I'm just being a little bit thingy here because I don't want to cut them really. We'll pull it back on itself a bit under here. So it's tucked in. I know it would have been easier with a needle. I'm just getting rid for the sake of showing you that, you know, if you're travelling or anything like that and you haven't got a needle, you don't really need one. Look, there's that loop that I caught earlier. I'll put that in a bit. It's, you know, when I've been crocheting and I've missed one of the loops off the three strands. 
So that's what happens. You get a little odd one that sticks out of places. I'm just going to pull it through so it doesn't catch. <clears throat> this is your knotty one, so put it in close. Get it in. Okay, put it through again there maybe. That's where it wants to go. That's all I do is put things where they want to go. I follow places and look where I think it would look nice. If I don't like it, I pull it out. I, I never followed patterns. I didn't really I don't ever remember reading many crochet patterns, knitting patterns, I could, I could, yeah, but not crochet patterns. So me writing patterns now, I mean, I had to learn how to, what the stitches were called to be able to try and write the patterns in the first place. Um, but up until about six, seven years ago, I didn't know what the stitches were really called. Anyway, that's all that's getting, because it's fine, it's not going to go anywhere. Some more ends for my inches. There, what do you think? It's dead squishy. And stretchy. And comfy. 